it's confusing now because you're saying men are getting worse generationally but men are being raised doing, worse by women that are having children out of wedlock what do we always say what have we always heard a woman can't teach a man how to be a man so that means <laughs> That if there's some boys out here that's wilding out and doing wrong, then it's their daddy fault. I titled the live Men Need a Wake Up Call, right? These men need a re uh, reality check. And the reason for that is because it's just true. We got Toronto in the building. What's up? Um, Welcome to the stream. We are live today, by the way. I know y'all used to seeing the premieres. A lot of y'all be thinking we live, and we're not. But today we are actually live. <clears throat> Let me straighten this up. But um, back to why I titled the stream the way I did. Um, I titled it that way because it's true. And especially... When we see the stuff that we see going on online, um, we see people getting in trouble left and right. We see people making it big online, you know, building these huge YouTube channels from talking about things that aren't helpful, that actually harm society. And they got big they got a lot of support, a lot of backing, and they're making a lot of money. And to me, it's upsetting because a lot of the stuff that we see men talk about today is messing up life for the younger generation. There's a lot of men, a lot of young people that don't have the proper guidance in their lives. And unfortunately, they, they're looking for some type of mentor. So they'll go online because that's the way the world works in 2024. If you can't find somebody to pour into you or give you some game or tell you about their life experience in real life, you can go online and there's no shortage of people that will tell you about life from their point of view. And there are some good people that share some good information and thank God for them. They're appreciated. But there's also a lot more men that uh, their main goal in life to me is to fill a, find a, 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 a Find a place that they can insert themselves and make as much money or get as much fame as they possibly can and or both. You know what I'm saying? And they don't really care about the future of the people that are watching them. They seem to care. But the stuff that they're telling men to do online is evil in a lot of ways. It's careless. It's reckless. And the fruit that it's going to produce in their lives is going to be rotten fruit. Let's put it like that. Um, I got a problem with that. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's stuff like this that keep me up. And it actually, it, 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 it affect me in a way where sometimes it bother me so bad that I can become sort of ineffective myself because um, it just makes, you know, I done talked about it before. A lot of this stuff make me angry and uh, I don't want to, I don't like being angry. I don't enjoy being angry. That's not my personality. I'm a calm, laid back, mellow type of person. And um, I don't enjoy what happens when I snap or when I get into it with somebody because just me knowing myself, if it get to that point where I go all the way, <laughs> I'm going to regret what I say and or do when it's all said and done. 
and I'm going to be shamed. You know, I'm going to be ashamed of it. And a lot of times, you know, like you'll see me this week, I had a pretty big break in my uh, content. I ain't put no video out since probably last week sometime. And uh, a lot of the, the, when the, when that type of stuff happened, it's because there's something on my mind that is, uh, is weighing on me in a way where I can't even necessarily think clear enough to come on on camera and feel good about putting a message out because the stuff that I'm seeing has gotten me to a place where I don't enjoy being. And I just don't want to get on here and be speaking from a place of, of hatred or anger or, you know, I don't want to put no toxic messages out. I don't enjoy being a person that... uh calls people loud and, and confront people and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of the stuff that we see is uh is necessary for us to call it out. Especially if you really care about people. You know what I'm saying? But um I'ma get I see y'all y'all comment and stuff asking me if I seen certain things that happen in 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 the uh online or whatever and actually i'm gonna show y'all some of this um one of the things somebody just mentioned that's one of the things i'm gonna show y'all i'm gonna actually play the call and before i get into this the stuff the clips that i'm gonna show y'all i want y'all to understand this is live and there's some people that's using some language and talking about some things that really aren't you know representative of me I, like I used to cuss and all that kind of stuff I realized how that made me look and how that made me feel and how that that affected the people that watched me so I stopped you know and um, I feel like I've leveled up as a person my content has leveled up since then so I don't cuss no more in on camera or in my real life and it's been like that for a while now you know but today I just want y'all to understand we live. I can't edit the videos because I'm playing them straight off of the internet where they were posted at originally. So uh, if you hear some foul language that you don't necessarily like, I apologize for that, but I can't control it. And um, maybe if I, find, if I have enough time, what I'll do is I'll um, take the, the file and I'll try to go through and edit it and make it where all the cussing and stuff like that is bleeped out. But um, that's a, another layer of work <laughs> that I would have to do, but I'm willing to do that because I don't want to be, you know, offending people like that. But starting off, we're going to go in Matthew 12 and verse 34. It says, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by, by your words, you will be condemned. And it kind of go back to what I was saying when I first started um, this video, this live. I try to be careful with what I say because I know that it's going to matter at the end. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to put myself in no messed up predicament. I want to go to heaven. And I also want to help as many people, and I want God to use me as much as he possibly can on my way up. So I try to be careful with what I say. I try to be thoughtful with what I say. And when I'm in a, a mood or a mode where I know I'm not going to be my normal, calm, methodical self. I tend to just stay away from the microphone. <laughs> and um, that's something that I've been praying on. I've been working on it. But I'm a man at the end of the day. I got things that I got to work on. And that's what I'll be doing when I take my little breaks. <laughs> but understand that... Uh, this verse, this this passage that I just read, it rings true. Um, 
these men that I'm getting ready to show y'all, I got a couple different, like four different clips I'm going to show y'all. And all of them are pretty much doing the same thing. A couple of them I already covered before on my channel. Uh, one of them, I ain't, I've, I've never really seen him before, but um, it's just he's he's a he's a he's cut from that same cloth. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just feel that it is necessary for me to go ahead and, and, and show you all this stuff. But and I get to some comments and stuff later on. But right now, I just want to go in and, and, and get this off my chest. But starting out. We're going to go with this one right here. Is it possible to cheat and still love your person that Man, you're with? Men have sex course. with no feelings. Listen, so I think y'all comparing the wrong things. And I tell women this all the time because the greatest thief of joy is comparison. Red don't need to worry about blue. Blue don't need to worry about yellow. I'm not coming to you for the lack of her, her, or her. I'm coming to you because you probably the best at these situations. So when dudes f*** off, we like to call that p to go. Just some fast food Woo, oh woo, woo, woo. But we got the real culture, the soul food, and the crock pot at home marinate. That's the shit that we can bring home that we make at the house that we slow cook. Like sometimes some people go, it's okay. Now remember what I told y'all. The language is gonna be kind of filthy. Um, I'm sorry for that. Um, it's not coming from me, <laughs> but I just want to show y'all some stuff because I'm tired of seeing videos like this and they need to be addressed directly again i don't know who this man is i've never seen him before i just i scroll on instagram and you know all these other uh platforms just like everybody else and sometimes i i'm served this kind of stuff on the on the for you on the explore page but they asked this man if you could cheat on a woman and still love her and this is what his answer is he says oh basically women shouldn't compare themselves to other women and if your man cheat just accept it it's just a little sum on the go and it don't mean nothing and he go to the other woman because she the best for that situation so she the best for sex and uh just making excuses for why Messing around on your woman should be acceptable. A woman should be okay with this. It's not okay, and I don't understand why it's so hard for people to understand that. It's not a, it's not a, a difficult concept to grasp. If you say that you're in a relationship with somebody, being faithful is expected unless you're in one of those kind of relationships where Y'all are, are doing the poly thing and y'all bring other people into, into your bedroom and y'all do that kind of stuff or whatever like that. But the majority of people, when they get into a relationship, they expect for, for you to not cheat on them and they expect for you to be trustworthy. They don't expect for you to be lying and being manipulative and sleeping around and all that other, that other kind of stuff. If they did, why would they be with you? And none of us are dumb enough to think that it's okay to be able to to cheat on your woman, and she should be she should be willing to accept it. And we see comments all the time: of, "Oh, women are foolish to believe that successful men are, are really gonna be uh, faithful to them." Why is it that we accept that that low level thinking, like? Why is it that as men, if we do make it to become successful, if God bless us to become successful, why is it that we think it's okay, it's, it's, we've earned the right to mess around? You haven't earned the right to, to treat one of God's daughters wrong. You know what I'm saying? Who do you think you are? Are you not God because you make a certain, a certain amount of money? And then I look at these, I look at men from other ethnic backgrounds and they can be the most richest men in the world. And then they'll have their same wife that they was with from when they was in high school. And they, they talk about how they don't cheat on them and they dare for their kids and all this other stuff. 
But we see men like this, people that look like us mostly, or get online on these on these podcasts, and they'll say, "Oh, don't expect a man to become successful and then be be faithful to his woman. Why would he want to do that? Because he respect himself enough to not put his thing and everything moving." And number two, he respect his woman and love her enough to not embarrass her and have her looking dumb and jeopardizing everything that she's supporting us through. Like, I don't think, for one, I know what it is. A lot of these people that be speaking, they don't even have experience of being in the, the particular predicament that they speak on. These men, a lot of the times, they're, they're not wildly success, successful, and they don't mess with good women. They mess with the ones that run around in the clubs and get drunk, and they trying to go home with somebody, and they cool with one-night stands, and they trying to get pregnant from rappers. And, you know, that's what type of women these dudes chase after, right? So they don't even know what it looks like to have a woman that truly support them and love them and have respect for herself and, and know how to hold a man down for real, like... They don't have, they're for one, they not godly. Number two, they don't even, a, a godly woman is a turnoff to them because she not going to go and, and let her let him lay down with her on the first night and have a one night stand and all this other dumb junk that we like to promote in this culture that we living in today. We got hookup culture going crazy. Everybody is, is sexually charged. I had one day, I'm not going to lie to you, um, I was scrolling on Instagram and TikTok, but it was mainly Instagram, looking for, for videos, for clips that I can play on a, on, a, um, on a video, on a live. And just the level of nakedness <laughs> that I came across, like I got, I, I found myself, I don't know how I found myself in this area of Instagram, but every video was just somebody with their booty out they twerking, they showing their body. I'm talking about, it, it, I'm like, I had to, I just told myself, ain't no video going to get made today. I got to get off because the Bible says that if you, the Bible says that you're not supposed to commit adultery. Jesus says, I say to you, if you even look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery with her in your heart. So when I'm looking online and I'm seeing all this, I'm like, this is a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like, I just, I can't even get on. I got to take a break from social media. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is a lot of these men that have these microphones and they get on these platforms, they're not telling the truth that there's a difference between those women that do that and then the other women that post their mind, like what they think about, how they think, who they are as a person online. There's it's completely different types of people in this world. There's women that don't have a naked picture of themselves or a half naked picture of themselves on their page. You know what I'm saying? But when we talk, when a lot of men talk online, the woman that they have in their head when they're making these critiques and they they throwing out these philosophies, they're talking about the women that do the, the most, the sexy reds and all those type of women. You know what I'm saying? And then they 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 cast a wide net and good women get yanked up in that net with them, with the with the sexy reds. So and they on these platforms telling men that they need to sleep around and all that other kind of stuff and not take women serious. And instead of telling men, hey, there's good women out here, this is how you find them, this is how you recognize them, and this is how you treat them once you get them. They don't do that. They just equip young people or, or older, impressionable-minded people, they equip them with tools to use in order to protect themselves from women that have the Jezebel spirit and that will come in and wreck their life. They're not talking about how to deal with a, a woman that has a good character and, and she's morally sound. So what does that mean for the generation coming up? When they come across a good woman, they're going to fumble the bag. They're going to fumble her because all they know or all they think is that all women are the same. And they, they've been told to go out and be an exhibitionist 
sleep with as many women as you can, don't respect women, uh, all this other stuff. So they're going to try to apply that to when they finally, if, they are, if they're lucky enough to meet a good woman, that woman ain't going to give them the time of day. They're going to go on about their business. They're going to find another woman that does fit the criteria, and then they're going to tell themselves that it's hard to get in a relationship because women are difficult. They're either too easy or they, they, they expect too much. They have their, ex, their expectations are too high. Because you've been told by a fresh and fit type of person that all women want men that only that have money and that's all that's important. And once you get that money, you just carry yourself like you're trying to be the 2024 Hugh Hefner or somebody like that. And that's not really helping men. That's not helping society at all. You know what I'm saying? Then... Speaking of fresh and fit, uh, fresh, it done came out that this man done got somebody pregnant and he trying to, he tried to force the girl to get rid of it. I'm about to play that clip for y'all in a second too. Keep in mind, um, it's not going to be edited. It's going to be played raw. It's an actual uh, recorded phone call. Um, the woman recorded the conversation between him and her. And uh, they talking about deleting the baby and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'll let y'all see it for y'all. So. I want the baby because I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. No. No. I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good. I am pregnant. I can't pretend like nothing happened. I can't. In my religion, we don't kill. You're not Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. I just don't want any kids. If you don't want kids, then why are you engaging in behavior that will make you have a kid? Even if you married, if you got a wife and you decide that you don't want no more children, then you need to do what you got to do to make sure that you don't get your wife pregnant. <laughs> it's just, it's common sense to know if a man and a woman lay down together have sex without protection. Having a baby is a, a a possibility. We learned that as far as as early as middle school, elementary school in some cases. We know that a man and a woman doing the right the, the right activity at the right time of the month can produce a child. This man, they say he he done made millions and he got Lambos and luxury watches and real estate and all that stuff. This is a man that they said is smart. Him and him and his sidekick, they 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 wildly successful. They millionaires. How come they don't have enough sense to know that if they have a child or uh, have uh have sex with a woman and don't cover themselves up and that woman ain't on some type of birth control that she can have a baby. And then they'll say that it's the woman's fault if she becomes a single mother. How is it her fault? Because you presented the, the, the option of getting rid of the child and she said no. So that's her choosing to be a single parent. You caused that woman to be a single parent when you knew that you wasn't going to be in a relationship with her. You wasn't going to marry her. You just wanted to have sex with that woman. And you know what can happen when you have sex. Why do certain men get online and say the stuff they say when they know better? Could it be you just don't care? That feeling, you so hard up for some sex that you don't really care about the outcome until the outcomes become real, when you got to deal with some responsibility. Now you care about the outcome. Where was that thought? Before you approach that woman, 
exchanged numbers with the woman and took her out or whatever you did to get you in the position where you can have sex with the woman. Because these type of men, right, we all know what they're about. They on their podcast all the time talking about how they don't want to be in a monogamous relationship and all that stuff, right? So you knew off the rip you was just trying to use that woman for sex. <laughs> you knew you wasn't going to be in a relationship with that woman. You knew what you was you was after that woman for one thing. Maybe two. You wanted to have sex. And the woman is is a model. They say she was Miss Asia or something like that. So by you getting with this woman, what does that do? Boost your ego. Oh, I got a model. I'm, I'm hitting Miss Asia. Look how many men would love. They look at them. They just look at her. They want. I see her DMs. I see her comment section. They trying to holler at her. I got her. That's what you're thinking about. You ain't thinking about finding somebody that you can build a life with. Finding somebody that you can actually marry and have a, a fruitful life. You made all that money, got all this influence, you sleeping with women, and now you done created a child that you don't want. And it looked like, far as we know, if it's true, if she really is pregnant, you done became a, a, a single father, made this woman a single mother, and caused a child to be put in a situation where his daddy don't want him, and he going to have issues probably for the rest of his life that he probably going to have to go to therapy for when he get older because he going to have to deal with the feelings of rejection. My daddy wasn't there. My daddy didn't want me because this video was online, and God forbid he may find it one day. And hear what his his daddy said to his mama about him. No. Okay, so what you gonna do? And what you gonna do to me? Nothing. What? Why did I do anything to you? Nothing. What? Why did I do anything to you? No, I know. So, like, how are you gonna deal with this? By by saying I don't want a baby. That's all. I mean, I go to the, to the doctor, I guess. To the doctor. So you want a? I mean, yeah. Why do you want a kid now? And why do you make me pregnant now? Because <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that that's true. But then I said, oh wow, like. So just think about it. It's mean to be. God Sorry? wants to, God wants you to have the baby. Definitely not. It is. God wants you to have a baby. Seven years never happened. And then you're relate in a relate you're f me for a month and I'm pregnant. What does that mean? Well, like it, it now I just think about it, if like if you force me to kill the baby then you're a sin. Well, we already sin by having sex. But it's too late now, you know? See what I'm saying? Oh, man. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. He's talking about words in this, this passage right here, but... The Bible also says that you reap what you sow. So if you reap from the flesh, you will reap, you will sow destruction. If you sow from your flesh, you will reap destruction. Why is it that people don't seem to understand that? <laughs> we have a big problem. In the the gender war and all that stuff, right? We talk about men this, women that. The problem ain't men. The problem ain't women, really. We have a sin problem. But 
this world that we live in, they, they're far away from God. So many people are just doing what they want to do. And then you'll see somebody get canceled for promoting God and saying that we need to do things God's way today. They'll get ridiculed. Stop trying to push your religion on me and this and that. Listen, show me how a person that follows God and, and read the Bible and stuff like that. Prove to me that them following God ends up leading them to destruction. If you can show that to me, then... Maybe we can have a discussion, <laughs> but you're not going to be able to show me that. Following God is always going to be better. Way better than following fresh and fit. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather read the Bible, watch sermons, go to church, hang around godly people all day, every day. That's what that's what we all need to be promoting. But today we run to the Internet and we see these people with these podcasts saying, hey, fellas, look over here. And let me tell you that women ain't no good. They all want money. They will cheat on you with somebody that has more money than you. If you don't have no money, you need to be on the lookout. They're going to take you to court. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. They tell you all of that, but they don't tell you that, hey, fellas, a lot of this stuff that we talk about, it happens. But we usually bring it on ourselves because we're not looking at a woman's character and trying to get to know the woman and taking our time to get to know her body. We want to jump off the diving board straight into the bed and just have some fun. We're not taking relationships serious. We're not trying to date to marry. Everybody dating to have fun. And these are the people that get pushed on us, pushed down our throat every day, constantly. And these are the people that are having the biggest influence as, as, as though it seems right now. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad. It's sickening. You know what I'm saying? Like, it done got to the point where I see certain things and I just shake my head and be like, Jesus, please just come on back. Cause this is, it's, it's done got way too out of hand. <laughs> That's really where I'm at with it now. You know, this world is so wicked and y'all know I had to take a break not too long ago because I, I just, I, I started just I was I got fixated on how wicked this stuff was and I'm just looking at it like again I was just looking at the world in disgust like man <laughs> I got kids man and and I don't I hope God allows me to live a, a, a long healthy life so I can be here to to make sure that I'm a, a part of helping my children to be the best people that they can be. I, I don't want to leave them before I equip them for life, you know? Uh, so I plan on being here for a while unless God say different. <laughs> and I'm praying that my children are here for a while. I want the world to be a better place. But I, I think about what these people are doing and how it's affecting the youth. And it's like, what hope do they have? And it's like, okay, how do we fix it? To me, the answer is obvious. We need to introduce people to Jesus. <laughs> we need to introduce people to the Bible and, and, and stop promoting all this toxicity. Start promoting people that actually care for real and they got a, a, a godly message. But that's not what they do. They promote sexy red and... Every time I get on Instagram, I promise you, I'm going to see a, a post of her doing so. I just saw a post of her uh, 
I think that was last night or earlier today. She went to a, a high school to go speak to some kids, but the administrators told her she had to leave because she came into the school smelling like weed. So what did she do? Go out into the parking lot, turn her music up in the truck she was in and stand on top of the truck twerking and got the kids uh, listening to the music, singing the music and acting a fool out there in the parking lot. And it's like, these people are so bold that they they got they have the audacity to feel like they're entitled to be able to push that their their toxic messages on our kids. And then when we speak up on it, they say we hating. You know what I'm saying? Like you see D1, he spoke out against Meek Mill and Rick Ross and them, right? They talking about what they're gonna do to the man, they picking on the man, calling them basket head and saying he broke and he don't spend no money in the hood buying turkeys on Thanksgiving. So they he can't say nothing to them. You know, the people that actually want to do good will cut their legs from up on them. Well, they can't even do no good. But these people will promote them and push them and, 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 and listen to their music day in and day out. And we will never hold them accountable for the foolishness that they do. We just let them wreak havoc. <laughs> and then when you speak some truth, they'll come at you and say, oh, you hating. You got some rappers, they, they, uh, they fans will attack you if you say something negative about their favorite rapper. <laughs> Imagine that. You say something that's good. Something that's needed. And they want to tear you down for it. But the people that's pushing a message that is tearing us down, making the, making the world a worse place, let them rock. Let them do their thing. <laughs> I got to show y'all another clip. This right here is from the, the podcast Harley Initiated. Um, they, were, they had a debate the other night. And Anton Daniels was on the on the uh, panel. And they had some points th during this conversation that was good points. You know, they had some spirited, you know, parts of the, of the podcast where it turned into arguing. And, you know, I didn't agree or disagree with either one of them 100 percent. Some of them said some things that was spot on. But they asked Anton Daniels after he said all of the things that he said, and this was towards the end of the podcast, basically what do we need to do to fix the black community? And he said that <clears throat> men are doing the work already. Black men are doing the work already. We just need to hold black women accountable. But basically saying that they don't want to listen, they're, uh, you know, the usual stuff he say on his channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, I'm not finna show the whole podcast. I just want to show the part, the hypocritical part, <laughs> I might add, that he said. And um, we'll, um, give, I'll give y'all my thoughts on this stuff right here. Let's get into it. Because we nearing the end of this conversation, I actually want to talk solutions now with you brother so let's mm. kind of change the context of the conversation because we have addressed that we have a generation of men now that are pretty much at, on, on a decline at this point mm. and most men are not able to sustain these long healthy relationships but the irony of that is we need these healthy relationships to be the foundation of a healthy community and a society so that is a big issue that we are having. I put a lot of onus on men, especially as a man, that is going to be us to find the solution to this. So if we're talking to a group of men and we telling them, where do we start to get our shit together? How does that look? Where do we start? Taking personal accountability, straight up. That's always gonna be my answer. I firmly believe that as men, if we are going to call ourselves men, then we need to be one engaged in things that create that ability to have integrity, that ability to have follow through, that ability to sustain what it is that you said that you're going to sustain and that ability to do what's necessary in order to 
once again, take responsibility for what it is that you need to take responsibility for. That's one, but also two, I firmly believe in what it is that Coach Crump is saying, having more initiations into manhood or having more initiations into what it is that it looks like for you to become a man who, what I like to say is worth it. So, so that's, that's, that's my answer. Self, self responsibility. Yeah. And I, and I, and I yeah. And I catch the alley up on the back end. Cause I, I did have a second part, which is, you know, doing an actual rites of passage for every single person. And, and as a man, if you haven't had one, go back and do one. I'm doing mine with my son. Like I said, we're going to Bermuda. He has a three day weekend, all inclusive experience only men where he understands what his role and responsibility in all the four uh, archetypes of manhood and then what that looks like for a crumpler as he rolls it out over the next 20 years and, and helping him see that, give him paperwork, give him investment accounts, like give him everything he needs at 15 to say, this is what it's like to live life as a crumpler. So you prepared to be the man that God and I have and, I, and our family has prepared you to be. Men just don't have that formal transition to be like, got it. I'm going to run the play. You know what I mean? And um, I think it's my duty to not only do it for my my son, but I'm bringing some boys with me um, to ha and share that experience with him and as many fathers and sons to share that experience because that's really what systemically we're missing that we want to make sure at 15 and 16 and 17, every man, and for those who did it, go back. Take the person accountability and say, look, I need to go through a process. I need to read some books. I need to have a paradigm shift in how I operate and how so y'all see what he said right <clears throat> he said he's teaching his sons and he also bringing some other boys with him right <clears throat> we've seen men get on 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 podcasts and say hey if you're a part of the black community and you got something to say about how things are, we know what the problem is. One of the major problems that we have is a lot of men, a lot of uh, boys and girls, for that matter, are growing up without proper guidance. They're, they're not growing up in a two parent household. In a lot of the cases, daddy ain't there for whatever the reason is. Right. So there's people that have said time and time again that there should be some initiative for you to look out in your community, wherever you're at. And if there is a boy that you see that might need some attention, give it to him. And then again, you will see people come out. It's not my responsibility to help no woman take care of their child. It's not, I'm not going to help you take care of your child. Go back and be with his daddy. What if they daddy was manipulative what if they put their representative in front of that woman until they got her to fall in love and get her in the bed which a lot of men do that's common and then she finally woke up and said oh my god this man is a monster because he showed her the monster in him right he finally removed the mask and he showed her who she was would you tell a woman would you tell your sister to go back and be with a man that was abusive or that you know he would drag her down and, and she would her and her children would never be able to flourish from being around that man. No, you wouldn't. But you also are saying <laughs> on one hand, you 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 and, and another thing that you're saying on top of that is if there's a man around that is a good man, not only should she not be with an abusive man, but the other men that are around that may see that woman and see that child and say, you know what? I look out for her. I got it. I got a little extra. I bring, bring her son to the game with me and my son tonight. You saying that we shouldn't do that. We should let them fend for themselves because they made bad decisions when it's not cut and dry like that. It's not black and white like that. A lot of these sing a lot of these women that end up becoming single mothers don't just do go out there and chase after the worst man they can find. Finally, get the man to sleep with them and be like, "Yes, I'm pregnant now. We got to take care of a child together. I don't, I don't trapped you. Now you got to be with me." That's not what's happening. But they want to treat these women like that, and there is accountability that has to be had on both sides. I'm not saying that women are 
are uh, absolved from every, any responsibility if they go out and, and sleep around and stuff like that and they're being reckless and, and then they end up getting pregnant. I'm not saying that they have no responsibility in the matter. I'm just saying that, again, we can't paint these broad strokes with these extra long paintbrushes and say that all situations are the same. Some of these women are good women. They got tricked from possibly not having their daddy around and a man came through and was saying everything they needed to hear and made them feel good, made them feel like they was actually going to get some love for a change. For a change. And now they got a baby with somebody. <laughs> Right? That happens. I know women that that has happened too. You know what I'm saying? So, again, somebody, natural beauty says so many nuances. Exactly. Life is not just straight up and down the same for every situation. Everybody has, has their own journey. Everybody has their own things they're dealing with. Everybody has their own upbringing. There's a lot of similarities, but not everything is the same. There's no compassion from these men that you see on these podcasts. All they want to do is speak. They want to be the mouthpiece for the broken men of America, broken men of the world. There's a lot of men that have been done wrong. They ain't have their daddy. They feeling hurt. They need to heal. They got pain they going through, but they got a person that can get on a, on a podcast and say, hey, I'm going to speak for y'all. They forgot about y'all. And all they do is go at women and say the women are the cause of every problem that we have all day, every day. And then people from their men from their brokenness can look and be like, yes, somebody finally get me. I've been trying to be a better me, but these women don't see it. And oh, I, I'm good. I'm a good man. And these women don't see it and they they mistreat me. You ain't as good as you think you are. I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna be honest with you. Most men and women ain't as good as they think they are. <laughs> All of us are flawed. All of us have things that we need to work on, including myself. So as good as you think you are, bring it down a few notches. <laughs> Humble yourselves. You know what I'm saying? We can't be around here feeding into this, this toxicity if you really want to see something change for the better. At some point, people got to wake up and realize that they're being influenced in the wrong way. They're, they're being coaxed and turned, steered in the wrong direction. How do you know if you're being steered in the wrong direction? Read your Bible. Get acquainted with the scripture. If you're doing something that goes against scripture, then you're wrong. Period. How I move. You know what I mean? And that's 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 what's going to help change it systemically for me is every home with the boys having the rights to pass, but we first got to have those homes. Anton, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the guys. I think that guys are doing the work. Um, if you look at Coach Crump, for example, he is already a reflection of it. I don't think that you you come to help people that are already doing the work. I think that you come to help the people and, and hold them accountable that's not doing the work. And so with that being said, uh, I think that the biggest thing is that we need to hold women accountable and we need to wow. stop pandering. We need to stop pandering. We need to stop simping. If you look at the data and the statistics, most black men do not have children out of wedlock. That is a narrative that's being perpetuated and, and, and being you know, promoted throughout our 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 spaces and social media and it's not true most men want to be married most men are growing most men are evolving men still make more women, more money than women you know something <clears throat> this is the thing that people don't pay attention to you'll never really hear them say this in this way he said that most men are not out here 
putting babies in women and, and dipping. He say the statistics say that. I don't know. I haven't looked. I, I ain't got them in front of me. But I can tell you that this is something that is true. Our culture promotes the worst example of a man. And we overlook the men that are really out here trying to live their lives in a godly way. And it's so bad that men and women look down on men that are trying to be righteous. We call them corny. We call them lame. We even say you a Christian in a derogatory way. But the men that are out here putting on the jury, talking like pimps and players, spending all their money on clothes for an image, spending all their money on, on cars for an image, we, we, we put those men on pedestals. And we continue to feed the system that continues to reward them for their wrongdoing. And they get to stand up on top of the mountain and look like, for lack of a better word, a god to these youngsters. And then we wonder why all of the men and the women, all the men, all, excuse me, all of the youngsters, they grow up and they looking at them and they want to be like them. And then all of the young girls, they grow up and they looking at them and they want to be with them. That's by design, by the way. It came out a long time ago. This ain't even nothing that's 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 news. It came out a long time ago that back in the day, they used to tell rappers, whether you're a man or a woman, that if you're going to make it big in the business, little boys need to want to be like you and the women need to want to have sex with you. Same thing with the women. Little girls need to want to be you and the boys need to want to have sex with you in order for you to get big. We, we see what's going on right before our eyes. You know what I'm saying? But this man right here, I'm getting ready to show y'all some more stuff that show you how, how much of a hypocrite he is. And then in this same interview, this same debate, he was talking about how many times he read the Bible. Oh, I read the Bible seven times back uh, cover to cover. Um, I, I grew up going to church and, oh, Paul is my favorite uh my favorite disciple and all this stuff he was saying, like he's so godly. But then you'll see him out the same mouth that said that say things that come that are completely against God. And the Bible says an unstable man. No, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. But he'll also drop that he's a millionaire. I got a multi-million, a multi-million dollar company. Which is the problem. Everybody, oh, I make money. I got money. That's why, that's why you need to listen to me. That's why I'm an authority figure, because I got bread. Don't you want to be like me? Don't you want to drive a Benz? Don't you want some Cartier glasses? Don't you want a nice watch? Don't you want to live in a, in a high rise building? Don't you want a, a mansion? My wife ain't got to work. But you leading people to hell. I don't know where y'all getting this from. And so the first thing that we got to do is we got to stop pandering. We got to stop simping. We got to start telling the truth. And we got to start holding the people accountable that are having the majority of the children out of wedlock and then creating the narrative and the culture by which we then live by. And we don't want to have the conversation because we think that or we keep saying that it's all men's fault and it's not. Women have advocated for equal. They now have the ability to choose for themselves. They then can get whatever job that they want and they can sleep with whoever they want. And they're doing it. They're doing it. And they're ruining the community. They're ruining the culture. And it's it's. Is creating the worst thing for us. And then we supposed to pick up the pieces, be a stepfather, be a community leader, take on your raggedy son with his snotty nose in order to try to prevent him from stealing my hood caps when he get older. 
Y'all heard what the first man said. The first man said he want to he want to do rites of passages for his son. And then we also need to encourage men to do the same thing with other children that we're around. We need to promote uh, rites of passage and, and, and teach young boys how to be men. We need to make sure that every household has a, has little boy that has a little boy in it being taught, teaching that little boy how to be a man and, and showing him what he got to do and how he need to move. But he, you heard what he just said. I'm supposed to. Take care of your snotty nose son and keep him from stealing my hubcaps. <laughs> that shows right there where your head is at. You care about you. But you got a channel that says that you are about men's improvement and you want to help. <clears throat> and you sit up there and talk about all the stuff that you don't like about the community. You're not trying to do nothing about it. Even if you was to say, hey, this is what I'm doing for the community. I love my wife. I'm faithful to my wife. I take care of my children. I'm building businesses. I employ, I employ black people. If that's all you did, if that's what you was doing and you doing it on your mind saying, I'm going to be a good example. Be a good example of what, pe what young boys that see me or see me online, whether they see me in person. I'm going to be a good example for people to look at me and say, that's a, that's that's an example of a man doing it right. If that's all you did, you're doing something. So I'm not telling you that you got to go out and, and, and get a bus full of uh, little boys from the hood and take them to, the, uh, to a football game or something like that. I'm not saying that you got to do that. But what I am saying is that you should have a, a, a heart to help people, if you're going to sit up here and speak on the same people, the same community that you speak on, all your commentary is about things that affect that community. If you're going to if you're going to build your platform on these people, talk about things that's going to help them. Don't sit up here and talk down on these people and, and act like you just want to throw them to the wolves and then turn around on the other side and say, I'm here to help. That's the problem with a lot of these people on these platforms. Mm -mm. I think that we need to bring shaming back. We need to make sure that we hold them accountable. And, and I think that if you are a woman that have children out of wedlock, we need to advocate for them to go back with their child's father. That's what I say. So just so, but here's the thing though, because it's, it's confusing now because you're saying men are getting worse generationally. But, Men are being raised but, worse by women that are having children out of wedlock. See, you can. Oh, this is what um, I just got to say this for some context. They started this video off with the question, are men equipped for long lasting relationships? Every last one of them on this podcast said no. Right. Now he's saying that. It's women's fault that men ain't men. What do we always say? What have we always heard? A woman can't teach a man how to be a man. So that means <laughs> that if there's some boys out here that's wilding out and doing wrong, then it's their daddy fault. The Bible actually tells men to raise their child. Fathers, raise up your child in the way that they should go. And when they grow, they will never depart. Men have a huge responsibility for their, their, their wives and their children, for their family. If you read your Bible from cover to cover, like you said, you would, your heart wouldn't be so hard. That's the problem that I have with this man in particular. Because let's be honest, this man has a lot of influence. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously su successful to some extent. He could do a lot of good. But he's choosing to do what he's doing and, and, and he's convinced himself that he's doing good. And then he got people that's, that jump on his platform and so that they can be next to the man with the clout 
they'll go alone to get alone. Or if it's people that don't have God in them, they'll sit up under this man and, and engage with him and um, continue to, to push more messages just like this out. And like I said, man, this is the problem. You can hold every man accountable, right? You can take 99.9% .9 of all men and say, clean up your act. And they can all get their act together. And guess what? That 0.1% of men can still populate the majority of the children because we know that women are having the majority of the children with less than 10% of the men. So the question isn't, we, we answer in a question when we haven't identified the problem. You heard what he said, right? If we told every man to get their act together and every man did, women would still find a way to continue to get impregnated by the 1% of men. So you mean tell me all the millions of women that are single right now, they will some type of way find the, the thousands, hundreds of thousands or whatever that number would be, 1% or whatever the population is right now on the planet. They would all find a way to continue to get pregnant. How does that work? <laughs> so that means that that 1% it's going to be so bad that if in this in this example, everybody got themselves together, right? The one percent of men are going to have a buffet of women that are just throwing themselves at them. So that they can be cheated on, lied to, disrespected, neglected. They're going to throw themselves at their feet and say, get me pregnant. I want to fornicate. I want to get pregnant. I want to raise a child by myself. All the women on the planet are going to run to that 1% of man so that they can destroy their lives or make their lives harder than they got to be. That's what your, <laughs> that's your, uh, your logic. You can't, you couldn't have thought that through. You can't believe that. The problem is we're not real. We keep simping and pandering to a population of women that think that they can go and slut it out. They go to these indoctrination camps that we call universities. All women are promoting having a whole face. And then we saying, well, listen, we need to get ourselves together so we can be the best for the community. But we're not dealing with the real issue. The real issue is that we have women that's operating like men, thinking that they're not going to be affected by the men that they sleep with. And then label them. They're operating like who? We got all these women operating like who? So men are the problem. That's what I'm saying. If you let people talk long enough, you'll hear them. You'll watch them contradict themselves. This man just said <laughs> that the problem is women. A little bit later on into the conversation, he says that specifically the problem is women acting like men. Am I the only one that understand what I just said? Am I tripping? I want somebody to let me know. Am I tripping? Am I off by assessing what he just said the way I did? Y'all let me know in the comments. <laughs> let me know if I misheard him or something like that. On themselves as wives and we pander to them in order to sell them a product and we keep telling them what they want to hear, but we're not actually solving for the problem. We treating the symptoms. We not treating the problem. We're not trying to fix them. We're not trying to fix our communities. We're not trying to reset the standard. We keep telling them what they want to hear because it makes them feel good. And what and are some, of these, what are of, some these of these guys, messages, Anton? When I see a lot of these guys come on these platforms, I'm just going to keep it 100. And at the end of the day, they selling a product. They not giving you a solution. At least give us the medicine inside of the candy. At least. And, and I'll also be, be very transparent with this. 
all of these people that y'all keep listening to, they not a reflection of the thing that they advocating for. They ain't even married, but they keep telling you what's, be what's best for the black community. I can say the same thing about him. This man is a married man. And he keep talking about how he been with his wife since college or something like that. But everything that come out of his mouth sound like something a single man would say. <laughs> so, okay. Men that promote that men need to get it together and we need to be more uh, open to finding a, a good woman and we need to learn how to vet women and marry and raise our children and, and all of that type of stuff. The men that say that, they're pandering to women. And on top of that, they're not even the men, the type of men that are doing that. They're not even the type of men that are trying to find a wife so that they can raise some children. Okay, granted, there actually is some of them <laughs> that are single and they talking about relationships, right? But look, same thing go for you. You're a married man. That's like me. I'm a married man. I got children. I have a family. We done bought a house. You know what I'm saying? We got all it. We're fa we're trying to be a family. We're working on it day in and day out to be good and, and have a healthy culture in our home. I'm working to improve myself as a man and do what I need to do as a man so that I can love my wife right and lead her in the correct way in the way that God want me to and raise my children in the way that God want me to. But then I get online every day and say, hey, y'all, check this out. These women ain't no good. Go out there and sleep with about 50 women. Go ahead and and and, and, and this is what you do to get them in the bed. This is what you got to say because they they gullible. This is what you got to do. Go ahead and and tell tell them this when you first meet them. That's going to make them react like this. Then you make them feel like you love them and you act like you finna simp for them. But then as soon as you get them to fall in love, you, you, you yank the mask off and say, surprise, I was just here for a good time. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's pretty much the same thing. This is my thing. If you happy being in your marriage, if you feel like you made the right decision for your family, this man also said that all of his uncles, they're men, they're, they, they're men that are married. They've been in relationships for long terms, all that stuff. He was raised in a two parent household, all that kind of stuff. Right. If you know that that's the way to go, then why not? Why are you not promoting that? Because we know that. There are some women and men that are tripping, but there's also a lot of them that ain't. Those are usually the ones that we say have unrealistic expectations. <laughs> Why are we not saying, hey, we got to level up because there are some good women out here. I have a daughter that I'm raising. This is the kind of man I want my daughter to have. So this is what y'all need to do. This is how y'all need to carry yourselves. So y'all can go out there and get with somebody, some man's daughter and treat her right and provide for her and protect her and have some children and, 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 and have a good life. This is what you got to do. If you happy with your situation and you've seen this your whole life, why are you not the guy that comes out on the podcast and say, hey, I know the secret. All of the men in my family are married and they, they never got divorced. They ain't got no outside children. And I'm the same way. I know what to do. This is what you do, y'all. This is what I saw in my wife. This is the environment that my wife hung out in. And this is how she carried herself. And this is how I was carrying myself. Why are you not doing that? Instead, you platform people that will sit up here and talk about how much of a player they are. Let's get on here and talk about how they body just crave vagina all day, every day, and they can't help it because they a man. This is what you do on your podcast, but your life that you living ain't even reflecting what you allowing to come out on your platform. So if the men that are talking up for women are hypocrites, what does that make you? How can you tell me what's black, what's best for the black community and you're not even a reflection of the thing that you're preaching? 
How you gonna be having children out of wedlock and having multiple baby mamas, but you sitting here talking about what's best for the community? The Lord said you will know them by their fruit and you need to get the beam out of your own eye. The thing that I want somebody to do for me is not be a nuisance and making sure that you're picking up the trash on your own lawn so we can then raise up the property values. I'm speaking metaphorically. What I'm telling you is that we need to hold the people. So essentially what he wanna do is gentrify the black race. The ones that are single mothers and the one percent of men that he said are impregnating all the single mothers. He wants to basically <clears throat> remove y'all from from the planet. He wants y'all to not exist so that then we can raise the property value in the community. <laughs> you see that? He forgetting that we dealing with people, though. And you just can't eradicate people. If you want to, what you should be doing is figuring out how you can help them, <laughs> which is what a lot of you, what a lot of the coaches that you see, a lot of them are actually trying to help people. But then you will get on here and say, we need to stop simping. Caring about people, trying to equip them for the, for the, uh, with 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 information that they need so that they don't fall victim to the games that men play and with the games that women play is simping. I make a video where I tell women, hey, this is what y'all need to look out for because men think like this. I'm simping for trying to tell them what they need to know so that they won't become a single mother. I'm a simp. I'm a simp for trying to look out for people in the community that you talking about. While you just pretty much want to get rid of them, act like they don't exist. Matter of fact, remove them from existence so that then our community can get better. But at the same time, some of these men that you just talked down on and said, the 1% of men impregnating all of the women, you'll put them on your platform and you'll let them rock. You get all chummy with them. They're your friends. You love them. Oh, my God. You, I'm going to show y'all something in a minute. Just bear with me. <laughs> accountable. When you try to solve for a problem, you solve for the majority, not the minority. And more importantly, if we want to talk about these men that call themselves leader in the community, let me see your wife. Let me see how you taking care of your family and your baby mamas. Let them come up and speak and say whether or not that you really a reflection of the thing that you advocating for. I don't want to hear no more pandering. I want to see truth. I want to see truth. Communication is 90% what you do. 10% is, is, the, is the reaffirming of what you already are. I don't want to hear from nobody that's not a reflection of what it is. This is the only place. You got to go and, and put your resume online, show your degree, give your life experience, your lived experience in order to even be able to get a job. But you can go out here and tell people how they supposed to live their, live their lives. And you're not a reflection of it. Your life ain't it. That's crazy to me. And so if we really want to solve for the problem, we need to get to the root cause of the, of the issue. And it's this pandering. It's this simping. It's people telling each other what they want to hear instead of telling them the truth. You may not like me, but it's very difficult for you to argue with the results. Very difficult for you to argue. Listen, man. <laughs> Again, this, I can prove the point that I want to prove. And I'm going to say this. I'm not an avid listener or watcher of this man's videos because every time I do come across one, he's saying some craziness or whatever, right? But check this out. I said earlier when I first started this live that a lot of men, a lot of people have got online, they've taken courses, they've watched people teach how to build a YouTube channel, and what we do, what, what we're taught in business, if you watch business podcasts, right, they will tell you that if you want to have a successful business, you find a need. And you feel that need, right? So we have a married man. He went to college. I believe his wife went to college. Uh, 
he was in the church, he says. He got married. They had a child. They're living their life the way God intended for them to live. Right? So essentially, on paper, he's living his life the way God says to live. Congratulations. Right? But here's the thing. What he says on his platform and how he lives his life don't necessarily line up. This man found a need because he's smart. He went to college. I don't know what he went to college for. <clears throat> but he found a need, and he's feeling that need. My question is, if you have your life so, so to, your life is together, right? Most people hang around people that are like them. You know the saying, birds of a feather flock together. So that would mean to me that if you have a happy marriage, you probably hang around people that have happy marriages more than likely. Why are you speaking from a broken point of view, talking about all of the problems that we see online, if that's not the way your that's not reflective of how your life plays out? You said your life is together. You traveling. Your wife ain't had to work in years. She a stay at home mom. She doing her thing. Y'all doing y'all thing. You, you straight financially. You say you got a multi-million dollar company. All of these things are going on in your life. And that's great. But you sound like a man that's single running the streets. And you sound like a man that want to cheat on his wife. And you want to sleep around and you want to hit the strip club and all of these other things that the, the single men like fresh and fit promote on their channel. And that's a problem. Your wife obviously ain't going to say nothing wrong, say nothing is wrong with that because you taking care of her. She's benefiting from how you get online and, and talk all this talk. But guarantee you, if you was doing that to her, if you was doing that in real life, she'd have a problem with that. <laughs> with the results. My wife is right there behind me. Everywhere I fly to, she with me. You can't argue with the results. And that's why I have the blueprint of what it takes in order to be successfully married. They telling you what you want to hear. I want to so, see people. So let me results. ask you this, Anton. Let me, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, bro, but I, I'm, I'm curious about this too because you said Crazy. that the root of the problem was that we dropped the ball generationally a while back. Are you saying that generationally it, it, it had nothing to do with the men? You're saying the women was who pretty much took us off track when we, when you say our, our, pretty much our ancestors dropped the ball you're saying it was our lady ancestors that dropped the ball more specifically. Correct. That was the initial issue. But when we see who's having the children today and raising these children, these men that they asking us to come and fix, that's a that's a real time issue. The real time issue versus the initial problem is two different things. The real time issue is that women are still having children out of wedlock with the majority of men. That's not best for the community. And so we can't go back and fix your sent father. His time. Remember what he said. They sleeping around with men that are not best for the community. Hold on to that thought. It's up. It's over for him. Now we can get some understanding and hold it, hold each other accountable so that we can better understand how we supposed to move forward. But when we talking about a real time issue, it's women that are raising men to be feminine. And then they telling us that we got to come and fix them. Stop having children out of wedlock. Go back with your baby father. Stop opening up your legs and marry before you carry and hold yourself accountable. Miss, and stop blaming men for everything. Let, let me ask this. Co Coach Crump, what's your thoughts when you hear that? As far as, um, you know, when we talk about solutions for, really, we talk about, I was really trying to find a solution, really, for masculinity. Hold on, I got to address a comment. Dennis G said, women do be having babies with convicts, though. This is what I want y'all to understand about that, right? Think about what you just said. Women have babies with convicts. It's usually the women 
that are in the same environment that those convicts are in. And what I'm talking about is getting people to to come to a higher level of thinking so they can take, so they can get out of that hood mindset. That's really what it is. We fighting against the hood mindset that is that really got shackles on us. When we talk about how the rappers are driving people to hell or and and, and they 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 making these uh sound they they create the soundtrack to the to 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 people doing the devil's deeds. When we talk about that, where is that really at for the most part? It's in the hood. Yeah, they get out to the suburbs and stuff like that because it's infectious and a lot of these kids, they like the beat, they like the music or whatever. But when they go home, they come in a gated community and they ain't, that's not the environment they live in. They can unplug from that when they, when they want to. The women that are having babies with these convicts are right there in the neighborhood with them. They grew up with them convicts. You know what I'm saying? That's who they used to. So again, I make the videos that I make speaking to those women saying, hey, you might not want to do that. You might want to stay away from him. Here's why. He's going to play tricks with you. This is what he's going to say to you. This is how he's going to act with you. This is how he's going to treat you. And you are going to be in this mindset because I know those type. I grew up in that neighbor, in that, that environment. I was once one of those type of dudes. So I can tell a woman, hey, be think more highly of yourself. Have more have some self-respect. You can do better. You can be more. You don't have to be stuck in the hood for the rest of your life, messing with men that don't mean you no good and ain't gonna never go nowhere. Level up your thinking, level up your 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 uh circle, and you can level up your life in general. You can find a higher quality level of man. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to deal with the same people that you grew up around, the type of men that you used to. And I'm also say this, not everybody in the hood is doomed to a life of being in the hood. There's a lot of people that come up out of the hood and they turn their life around. So if anything, I would say if you're going to deal with a man like that, this is what you look for in the man. So you can see if you're going to mess around and deal with one of these dudes that's going to come up out of that environment and y'all can have a good life together. But it seems like, Anton, you gave more so a it seems like was that the solution you were saying for the black community? Absolutely. That's the, that's the solution for the culture, for Western culture. OK, so so what's your, what's your thoughts when you hear that, coach? Yeah, there are a whole bunch of truth there, in there. Like the biggest principle that I think should be lost is accountability. Um, professors started with prefer personal responsibility. Culturally, the experience has been um, we got to make sure that everybody's being held accountable for their behavior. And the reality is we're not consistent with that on, on a lot of levels um, and during, for the culture. You know what I mean? But I'm big on when it comes to masculinity as men, we taking that charge on, taking our sons on and, and taking that issue. Because like you said, the other issue is that am I even the father in the home? Because I know I know a lot of fathers that want to be in their home, that want to be in their life. But the game of child support, the game of baby, like it's, it's so many other games that people are playing that even guys that really want to be that can't be that because of the situation they find themselves in. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, the responsibility part um, on everybody's part and, and women like that, that helps solve a lot of gaps. But we always pass and blame. Again, that's when all this stuff comes up, when we don't make it a line, we, we don't make it black and white, when we don't make it your responsibility, my responsibility. Now we create scenarios that people are left to interpret. You know what I mean? Uh, so, Odie, yeah, when you Odie, when you heard uh, Anton Solution, what was the what was the first thing that came to mind? The first thing that came to my mind still, personal accountability. If we're talking about these children being made out of wedlock, if we're talking about all of these different issues, my issue then becomes why is it that we then turn around and make it the woman's problem when it is also us who are contributing to this problem? I can't sit up here and say all of this is just the woman's problem or the women fumbled the ball like, nah, that's me as a man, that's me passing the baton. Is this constant ring around the rosy shit? Like, nah, bro. If I'm a man and I'm saying I recognize how it is that the community is moving in a particular way, and I recognize that men are the ones who are contributing to some of the things that are happening in the community, how I'm gonna go tell a woman, stop fucking these niggas. But then as soon as they stop fucking these niggas, 
then we turn around and we got a whole bunch of men who are now becoming predators. We got a whole bunch of men who are engaging in, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 sexual violence. Like, nah, G. If we're what? Gonna Bro, what do you mean? So wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, just you tell the woman to stop. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Anton, let him finish the thought real quick. Let him finish the thought, Anton. Say that energy, say that energy, Anton. Because the reality of the situation is this. The reality of the situation is this. A woman can't have a baby without a man, straight up and down. So to continue to have this conversation and put all of the blame on women as if though we are not contributing to this problem, yeah, I don't agree with that at all. Once again, how is the conversation about masculinity now becoming about what women need to do? How is it that we consistently, as men, when we have this conversation, we drive this conversation into what women need to do? We're talking about men, we're talking about masculinity, and the conversation becomes about women, we pass it in the buck. So if we're talking about, and that's the reason why I wanted to ask the question earlier in the conversation, what's your definition of the word simp? Because the way that it is that I learned about the definition of the word simp is a man who has no boundaries, is a man who has lack of control, is a man who consistently engages with a woman who has no intent of engaging with him at the level that he wants to engage. So once again, how is this conversation? And once again, I don't disagree with community-wide accountability. I don't disagree with that. But how is it that we get to this part or how is it that we get to this portion of the conversation about men where we start talking about women? And we talking about men? You said that everybody needs to take personal responsibility and accountability, and then you start talking about men again. Is it everybody or is it just men? That's rhetorical. Don't even worry about that. No, I'm going to answer your question. It's hold on, me hold on. But hold on, no, 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 but hold on. Because if we're talking about if we're talking about community based engagement, if we're talking about solutions, in my mind, in the community that I come from, in the culture that I come from, the men deal with the men and the women deal with the women. So if we're gonna have a conversation about what women need to do, I firmly believe that as an Ebo, we lead that conversation to the women. No, we, we don't. Lead- because the we women are not dealing with the women. They telling them and they enabling them. They're enabling them with bad information. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Because the men by default... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Got a question, fellas, got a question. Fellas, 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 fellas. Men by default, men by default are held accountable by society. If we don't pay child support... Hold on, hold on, hold on. If we don't pay child support, we go to jail. By whom? By whose degree? If, if we don't, if, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who's the if, if, hold on, hold on, Odie, hold on, Odie, hold on. If we don't pay child support, we go to jail. There are no uh, shelters largely that's made for men. There are shelters that are made for women mm-hmm. by default, by life. Mm-hmm. If we don't do what we supposed to do, there is no sympathy for us. We fail, we suffer, we don't get the girl, we don't get $200 and mm-hmm. pass go, we don't get Monopoly, we don't get, we don't get the railroads, we don't get nothing. You fail, mm-hmm. you die. And you go. That's it. Women. So men. <laughs> basically, men can do everything. We 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 is we're we're expected to be the cornerstone of society. It's a man's world, all that kind of stuff, right? But here's the only place that you can drop the ball intentionally when you deal with a woman. You can cheat, you can sleep around, go out there and sleep with all the women you can. Do all of that stuff. That's okay. <laughs> we hold men accountable. That's what he said. We society holds men accountable. Well, why don't we hold men accountable and say, hey, don't go out there and be sleeping around? Cause I know all my whole life I've been taught that the way you become the man. Is by becoming a man that got all the women. They never told me to find me a good woman and stick with her. They said, she, if you see a bad one, get her. And if you can have more than one bad one, all your friends look up to you. And that don't, that don't even stop when you become a grown man. Because grown men still have the same exact way of thinking. That's the problem. We hold men accountable in every other area. We supposed to go out and get a job and and pay our bills and all that other kind of stuff. But we lack to do that when we see men out here sleeping around. We won't say nothing. Man can sit up here and tell us how he done slept with five five girls in one night. And we'll high five him and and grin and go to cheese and like some, like a, like an idiot because we think, oh man, you did that. Man, you the man. 
instead of telling them, boy, you know you reckless. Why are you out here doing that? You know you're going to mess around and get one of them girls pregnant, right? You know you're going to be upset because you really don't even like the girl like that. Now you got to figure out how to raise a child with that girl, with one of them girls, and you don't even know them like that. What's going to happen when this girl find out that you really didn't want to be with her? You was just using her for sex and now she pregnant and now she hates you because you done played with her and broke her heart. How you think she going to respond when, when, when she figured that out and she pregnant carrying your baby? She going to make your life a living hell because she, now she upset because you done done her wrong. We ain't saying that. But we'll come on the other side of it and be like, oh, women be tripping. They get out here and put men on child support and they do this and they do that and oh, they, they can't be trusted. Why do they do the stuff they do? The women that, that get hurt and they, they act out of their pain, how do they end up that way? I can see if you was coming at the women that have good men and the men ain't abusive in any type of way. They actually love the woman and they treating the woman right. And then that woman go out and take advantage of that man. If, if it's a woman out here that's doing that and they exist, I ain't got no problem with you going at her. And I'm going to tell you this, women that got good sense, the good women that I'm talking about, they will go at that woman too. <laughs> why? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you exactly why they'll go at them because they know it's hard out here to find a man that got that type of mindset. And when they see a woman take advantage of that kind of man, they got something to say. <laughs> Cause now they know that man finna go out here. He hurt. He finna go out here and do some damage. Because of one woman being selfish or, 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 or being immature or being a user and taking advantage of somebody that's actually a good man. Men by default are always women. There are no men that are being pandered to. Women by default that's are cap. always. That's, that's a lie. You pander to men. Fresh and fit pander to men. I can name a whole lot of other uh, uh, podcasts that pander to men, too. People get on this platform all the time. Can I finish, can I finish my statement? What are you talking quick? about? Can you wait, what, wait, wait, hold on. What platform? Oh, wait, oh, wait, no, <laughs> Bro, when I say this platform, I mean social media. People get on social media and pander to men all the time. All the they time. Don't. They don't. Yeah. Men just, started, men just yeah. started getting spaces to where they can even get their thoughts off. And when they get their thoughts off, Women don't like it and they automatically want to cancel them. As a matter of fact, I'll go so far as to ask you, what women do you know at a mass scale on a, with large platforms that aren't single baby mamas that's actually holding women accountable? Multiple. Who? Name one. Multiple. Name one. Jasmine's Garden. Straight up. Who? Not a baby. Jasmine's Garden. You wouldn't know because it's not in your purview, brother. But I know How do you know what's in my purview? Brother, do you know who Jasmine's Garden is? I don't. My point. My That's point one is person this. at your name. How do you, you know just name somebody and I name somebody? Okay. And, okay. So you name somebody. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm a researcher and That's I'm a cool. better understander and I'm going to be open That's to cool. the possibility that I'm wrong. That's but cool. the rea but the reality is this. Women are being pandered to, and I believe that you're being disingenuous by not acknowledging that. Women uh, are being pandered to across the board. What I'm saying is that men are also pandering to other men. You were talking about all these not. Yes, they're not. They are. They're not. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. Uh, guys, guys, we, now we're talking in circles. So I, want, I do want to advance the conversation um, because uh, now I can't even remember your damn original point, Odie, because I, th I think what you were, what, what were you originally trying to communicate? You were communicating that essentially we shift the blame from us taking accountability as men to putting it over to women and we pretty much uh additionally add to the single baby mothers we are also a part of the puzzle of the single baby mothers being created was i think was your original point correct my point in my case in point why do we always talk about chastity but we don't talk to men about abstinence we absolutely do hold men accountable. No, we, talk. No, we do not. Bro, no. the biggest thing that, that we say on our platform. The biggest thing we talk about as it relates to men being men is men going out here as many women as they as many women as you're, they You're can. a liar because no, as a matter I'm of fact, that's what we talk about big discipline all the time. What anybody in this chat will tell you. That's that anybody in this chat. That's one population. That's, sexual, that's selection bias, my brother. If we're talking about how it is that men identify themselves as men, if we're talking about statistically, it is the domination and the sexual 
the sexual prowess over women. So how is that not constituting to a problem? Anybody in this chat will tell you that well, when so I have confidence, it's just anybody in now, the see, chat. Now, hold on, you, hold on, you, one you second, one second. You're operating in your femininity no, right no, now. No, no, check it out. Cap. Hold on, wait, Odie. Cap. 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 Check it out. Up. That's one thing they like to say, too, when you hold them accountable. You're operating in your femininity right now. So now he acting like a woman because he putting that press on you. And trust me when I tell you, the pressure ain't over with for him. I, I wish old boy saw this clip that I'm getting ready to show y'all when they was have before they had this conversation. What does that mean? Hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Because I, I let you, I, I I listen to what you said until you stop. Go ahead, brother. Now, and now me. I want to, and now I want to rebut, right? Go ahead. I'm, I, I'm and, a, I'm a, Anton, please rebut, and I, I, I have a follow up question here. But go ahead. Anybody in this chat will tell you that when a guy comes up on my platform or any dude that has ever gotten coaching from me, I go 10 times harder on that guy than I ever have any woman. 10 times harder on these guys. And what I find is that the guys are, are way more receptive to changing and evolving than women are. Women tend to be hurt, emotional. They, they want you to speak to their emotions. They want you to talk to them a certain way. But men, we go hard, like we push them, we make sure that they get themselves together, we don't let them have any excuses, we hold them accountable because we know that society is not gonna have no mercy on them. Ain't It's a different set of rules for guys and you gotta be way better, 10 times better than the people that you're competing against in order to be successful. So when we talk to men, it goes without saying that we do the work. But every time that we start to, in your words, hold other people accountable because accountability go both ways, just because I'm holding him, him accountable does not mean that you're right. And so we hold women accountable, but then you get you get emotional about the fact, and I'm not talking about you specifically, but men in general, they get emotional when they simp for these women because they think that we're supposed to treat them with kid gloves when the decisions that they make in is so, so egregious and it's, a, it's hurting us and it's affecting us in a negative way. So men are held accountable. They do do the work. And they are girding up, and they are becoming better versions of themselves. But I don't see the same thing happening with women. I okay, don't so, see. So hold okay, y'all, check this out. <clears throat> if y'all want to watch the rest of this, y'all go to uh, Hardly Initiated, and y'all check this video out for yourself. It came out on April 3rd, so it's, it'll be easy to find. It's the, it, the title is Debate, State of Masculinity with Anton Daniels, Professor Odie, and Coach Crump. What I want to do is get into this other clip that I want to show y'all because it's time for me to feed my family. I got to get off in a minute, so I got to make this quick, as quick as I can. <laughs> y'all remember, I made a video about this situation before, but we're going to re we're gonna have to refresh our minds on this. Um, this is an a interview Anton Daniels did on his YouTube channel. With a dude, with a, a battle rapper named A Verb. I understand that he says he brings people on his podcast to have conversations, but I just want you to see what he said and how he act when this man say what he say. It's too completely he is contradictory based on what he just said on a debate on Hartley Initiated versus what he's what they what was said on his own podcast on December 29th, 2023. You said something on uh I think it was maths that like it was a uh, come to Jesus moment for me cuz it just you know what I'm saying it was mm -hmm. almost like a a sermon that mm -hmm. you had put together and you were saying that guys get up more for different women that they dealing with on a regular, you know, yeah. different women that they need to knock down for sure. versus them, you know, getting that same stamina to knock down the same chick multiple times in a day. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you break that down for us? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's just not a lie. That's the problem we dealing with. <clears throat> if they ever became such simps, they feel like they have to lie to f mm -hmm. We, If you just tell her the truth, you still going to anyway. Yeah, that's true. You know? Like, okay, we all know one girl cannot make you feel like that. She cannot, hitting your gal three times in a row is like prison, if you really want to <laughs> be real. If you, come on, man, if you had her for all them years. Being monogamous, sleeping with your wife over and over again, is like being in prison. 
I thought Anton said he hold people accountable. He hold men accountable specifically. Y'all heard what his reaction was when he said that, right? Y'all heard the giggling in the background? That wasn't Jesus giggling in the background. That was Anton. <laughs> the married man that touts how, much, how many times he read the Bible from cover to cover and how he grew up in church. Tell me what's up. Is that pretty gay shit? Like, come on, like, that's yeah. Your, but you love her, so her pretty is something. Mm -hmm. You know, so so she goes past the line of like busting a nut. Mm -hmm. She is like she's valuable. When we love her, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But I mean, who want to keep hitting y'all like that? Like, I, I but three different girls walk in the room. I'm hitting all three of them. Yeah. Yes, all three. Of them. Do you think that that's the fascination with guys that want to be with multiple different girls at the same time? I think you just come from that. I, our bodies that we don't question these, these girls when they have a period. That's something we don't like. Mm -hmm. But our body tells us to get another girl almost every second of the day, and we walking around lying to appease these these things. Mm -hmm. Like we trying to like we, we trying to make y'all understand us. Fuck if you understand us. We have testosterone. When I when I walk down the street, no matter how girl bad my girl is, if another bad one walk by, what are we doing? We're looking. Mm -hmm. We desire her, and we, the, God put that shit in us. Fuck them hoes. You can't. We can't. De, you can't determine what we are. Mm -hmm. We do not like a period. We would like for you to stop that. You can't. <laughs> right? I mean. So this man basically saying all he do is think about sex. All a man does. All men do. Is think about sex. All we want to do is get it in all day, every day. We don't want to go out there and work and, and make some money and, and be the best versions of ourselves. We would rather just have sex. As a matter of fact, I go out on the limb and say, excuse me, the only reason that you should go out and make some money and, 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 and buy a nice house and get a nice car is so you can get women to be attracted to you so you can do what? Have sex. That's all we here to do. Men have testosterone, and all we want to do is slide up in something and risk having a baby and risk catching a disease and risk catching having all these uh, soul ties and and have women bust our windows out and all that other stuff. All we all a man can do is think about sex. You a man, Anton. You said you hold men accountable, Anton. You, why are you letting a man sit up here and say that all men want to do is sit around and think about sex and sleep around with women? You a married man. This man basically just talked down on you because you a married man and you probably sleep with your wife all the time. You should be sleeping with other women by his standards. But you're going to sit up here and cheese while this man pretty much just let it be known that you ain't hitting on nothing because you only got one woman to sleep with. <laughs> and so you not no man. You going against your nature by being with one woman. You married? You been married all this time? You ain't got another girlfriend? You ain't hitting something every now and then? You ain't no man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but 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 my testosterone tells that's what makes a man a man. Yeah. We can we we're we're designed to reproduce. Yeah. Make more kids. You can't cut that off. Where did this whole monogamy thing come from for Y'all remember the last debate we just watched, right? All men want to do is Sex, sex, sex. We here to just have babies. That's all we want to do is have babies. Anton just said that women keep messing with the very men in our community that are not good for the community. He also said in that last interview, that last debate, that these single women, these single mothers out here expecting men to help them take care of these snotty-nosed little kids so they won't steal, they, steal his hubcaps. But you sitting next to a man that's promoting behavior that will cause some, ch some child, some little boy, some little girl to be in the hood probably without him around, without him being a good example because he ain't a good example. And they'll probably go out and be done knocked you upside your head when you walk outside to your bins. <laughs> Because they grew up 
in the very environment that you talk down on and you would rather not deal with. That's why I say men need a reality check. Especially if you have a podcast where you putting your ideas and your thoughts out into the world and people are being influenced by it. <laughs> I don't think I even really have to say anymore. All I'm going to say is this, fellas, I see some of y'all in my comments. I'm going to tell you from, from my own experience, from what I've seen in my own life, how I grew up, how I've done things as an adult. It is way better to get yourself together, get a relationship with God and do things his way. Find a woman that is equally yoked, a woman that is out here trying to live in a godly way, the same way as you. Get with that woman and build with that woman. Forget about these women in the street once you find your one. Take your time to really get to know that woman to make sure that she is that one. Pray, talk to God about it. Because a lot of us, we give our life to God and then we feel like, okay, I've done the first step. I done, took, I done gave my life to God. I'm ready to be in a relationship because I'm burning with lust. And the Bible says that it is better to get married than to burn with lust. Let me go ahead and jump into a relationship because I can't control myself and I need to get it in. Don't do that. Control yourself. Learn some self-control. Think more highly of yourself than to think of yourself as a, a dog, a stray dog in the street that's just looking for something to hunt. Truth be told, there are some women that will take advantage of you if you let them. <clears throat> but that's the key to it. Once you build yourself up and you become a man of God, you deal with women that are on your same level. And anybody that's not on your level, block them out. Move like that. And I'm going to say the same thing. Same exact thing for women. Build yourself up. Build a relationship with God. Be your best self. God want to use you. Build your skills up. Help and give God something that he can use. Unplug from social media and sexy red and all these other people that are influencing us in the wrong, and making us think that the wrong things that... Let me go back to the Bible verse, making us think that evil is good and good is evil. The Bible says, woe to those that say good is evil and evil is good, by the way. You know what I'm saying? We got to hold. It's, it's, yes, it's, accountability is important. Accountability start with you first, though. However good you think you are, nine times out of ten, you're not. Be humble. Look to God for direction. Do things in his way. Steer clear of the devil. Use your discernment. Be Christ-like. You know what I'm saying? And nine times out of ten, over, a, over the course of your life, your life will be a lot better than one of these men sitting on this couch. That's the best advice I can give y'all on that one, man. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, there's going to be some changes more than likely coming to the channel. Um, mainly for this reason. You see what I said where I was talking about how a lot of people, they say that they want to help. But really what they want to do is fatten their bank account, right? So these men, they only quote-unquote help when it affects the bottom line. You know, they these people, they only make the videos that will get them the views. You know what I'm saying? And y'all may not know this about content creators because y'all ain't content creators, but... 
We have analytics that shows us what type of content our listeners want to see. So what ends up happening is people like him in Fresh and Fit, they end up becoming what we would call an echo chamber. They will continue to put out the same type of content because they know that it it gets them the views, right? And they rely on it if they if they full time on YouTube. They got to take care of their families, so they're going to do what they got to do so they can make their money. And on to a certain extent, I can't fault them for that cuz you got to take care of your responsibilities. The Bible says if you don't take care of your family, you worse than an unbeliever. So you got to get your bag, right? The problem is when your desire to get the bag affects what how you move in your ministry. So with that being said, um, I've struggled with being a content creator for that exact reason, because I have a family that I got to take care of. Right. And I do need the money to take care of my family. Right. But I can't allow my message to be watered down for the money. So, like I said in the beginning of this live, when things ain't sitting well with me, I can't record. When I'm when I'm when I'm not doing it in the way that well, or if I'm not in the right my the right headspace to do it in a way that that honors God, I cannot jump on this camera and make no video. So it's hard for me to be a full time content creator when I struggle with that, because I know I can make a video every day. And as long as I put a video out, it's going to get some type of views and that'll, that'll translate to more money on, on in my bank account. Right. I know I can do that, but my integrity won't allow me to do that. You know what I'm saying? So what I decided to do, me and my wife uh, talked about it. I'm going to go back and get me another job. I'm going to go back to trucking. I'm still going to do YouTube, but it's going to be different. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, because I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing other things. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to still do the lives. I'm still going to put out my videos when I get the opportunity to. Y'all just got to hit the subscribe button and make sure you don't miss out. <laughs> but I really want to help. I really care about people. You know, my I really want to be pleasing to God. When my time on this earth is done, I want God to be pleased with me. And until I can get to a place where money ain't an issue for me, I'm just going to do what I got to do as a man. You know what I'm saying? I got to take care of my wife and my children. That's my first priority. So I'm going to make sure I cover those, cover my bases when it comes to that. And then I'll do YouTube essentially not on the side, but kind of on the side, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> but I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, man. We hit 115,000 subscribers the other day. Um, I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. And that's all I got to say about that. But I will see y'all on the next one. 